Hey everybody, and welcome to our last video lecture on informal rules of thumb for forecasting uh, that we've been learning through exploring a couple of chapters from Philip Tetlock's book. In this video, we're going to discuss the difference between the outside, taking the outside and inside view on a forecasting problem, uh, and beneficial and the ways in which that can benefit our forecasting. All right, so thus far we've discussed the importance of asking clear questions, giving precise answers right, in the form of probabilistic estimates or intervals of probabilities, measuring our accuracy, thinking like a fox as thinking from different standpoints, taking different viewpoints into account when making a forecast, and breaking difficult estimating problems down into more tractable sub-problems like Enrico Fermi, the uh, physicist, did. Today we'll, cons uh, we'll cover the importance of taking outside and inside views into account when forecasting. So this is an aspect of thinking like a fox, right? taking different viewpoints into account when coming up with a forecast. So we'll, take, we'll first think of an example from the Tetlock book and follows the Rossetti family. So the Rossettis live in a small house at 84 Chestnut Avenue. Frank Rossetti is 44 and works as a bookkeeper for a moving company. Mary Renzetti is 35. She works part-time at a daycare center. And they have one child, Tommy, who's five. Frank's widowed mother, Camilla, also lives with the family. All right, so we're given this description of the family. That's our information. We're then asked, how likely is it that the Renzettis have a pet? So this is a forecasting problem. We're asked to forecast just on the basis of this information we have, whether the Renzettis have a pet. So when you first come across this description of this family and this question, and you start considering it, you might be tempted to try to initially focus in on the specific details of this family to try to gauge how likely you think they are to have a pet. Um, so you might, you know, try to weave some story together from the fact that, you know, Renzetti is an Italian name, and so they're Italian Americans, and um, they live with their widowed mother, and uh, or the, the father's widowed mother. And uh, maybe you weave some story about that, that such families are more likely to have pets or less likely to have pets than generic families. But that might not be the right, the best way to start thinking about answering this question. Right? It might be better to first look at what we call the outside view. Right? So when viewing a forecasting problem from the outside view, we look at how often events like the one being predicted generally occur without focusing too much on the details of the particular case at hand which can sometimes bog us down, right? So in this case, right, when we're trying to predict whether the Renzettis have a pet, right, by taking the outside view, we'd ask a very general question like, how many families in general own pets in America, right? Um, and we find that about 62% of them do, or at least according to Tetlock's numbers, 62% of folks. So that really should give us our initial anchor, our initial estimate for uh, how likely Renzettis are to have a uh, pet, right? Um, doing this is, we're looking at, the, again, at the outside view. We're not looking at the specific information we're giving out this family, the specific details of this case, but thinking more generally. Right? Then once we've done that, we can then start to look at the inside view, right? So does the specific information that we have support adjusting our forecast away from the base rate, right? Away from the estimate we got from looking from the perspective of the outside view, right? And when we focus on such information, that's when we're looking at things from the inside view, Right. So in this case with the Renzettis, right, we might look at some more specific information about them, like, oh, well, they're a one-child household, right, which we might suspect, you know, increases the probability of owning a pet. So maybe we should adjust our estimate upward somewhat from, from the baseline of 62%. Right? But we start with the outside view, looking at how probable events like this are in general, and then we look at the details of the case at hand and see how should we adjust our probabilities. So we can think of victims of base rate neglect, which we talked about last week, as uh, people who tend to focus too much on the inside view at the expense of thinking about the outside view. So remember we had the case of um, a doctor who gives a uh, medical test to a patient, and we know that the medical test is reliable, but that the base rate of the disease is very low. And let's say that the patient gets a positive result on the medical test. If you're thinking too much about the inside view, you just look at the fact that, oh, it's a positive result from this medical test, right? So, oh, the, that fits well with the patient having the disease. 
But that's that's failing to take into account the outside view, right? How likely is it in general that patients have these uh, have this disease, right? When we're doing good forecasting, we have to synthesize both those perspectives, the outside view and the inside view, right? This is all, all that we're doing this week, like with the other videos this week, are sort of informal. This will get cashed out much more formally when we do Bayes' theorem. But it's a good sort of rule of uh, thumb, right? Thinking in terms of outside and inside view and the need to synthesize them when you're doing your forecasting for the class forecasting project. So let's think of a few other examples uh, where we might be able to think of both an outside view and an inside view. So, so we think about students who are completing a class project. Perhaps it's a... Uh, class paper, and we want to predict when they're going, when a particular student, say, is going to complete their course project. Well, right, one thing you might do is you might, st right, in taking the inside view, you might look at that particular student and the, that particular case of uh, them working on their project and maybe, you know, how important it is for them to get their project done, whether there's stuff they have going on, right, and that all may be very important, right, it's taking the inside view. But it might be better to first take the outside view and look at, well, how often does that student in general complete um, projects on time? Or right, when do they, how far in advance do they generally complete their course projects, right? And if we find that, oh, that generally they complete them, you know, the night before, uh, that's a good baseline to think, okay, they're going to complete this coming project the night before. And then after that, we can take into account, you know, maybe some of the specific information about this particular project that might lead us to think, oh, they would do it earlier than that. Um, but our, our sort of initial anchor comes from thinking of the outside view that uh, they generally complete the project a day before, right? Or we can think of home sales, right? They were trying to forecast how much money a home is going to um, sell for, right? Uh, by take, taking the outside view, we'd look at, well, how, how much do homes in that area generally sell for, right? And that would give us a good sort of baseline or anchor for making a prediction about how much this particular home is going to sell for. And then after that, we could adjust that initial anchor estimate by looking at specific features of this home. So maybe whether it has a nice yard and so on, things like that, things specific to that particular home. Or we could think about, right, forecasting a plane crash, right, whether a particular plane is going to crash, right? Taking the inside view, we look at particular signals, maybe that that pilot is getting in a particular time, um, different feelings that the, uh, if you, maybe if you're doing this from the perspective of a passenger on the plane, you know, uh, you know, your sense of how shaky the plane is and such. Um, that could be information that's relevant. Um, but we might first start, especially if you're the passenger, right, you might first start with the outside view of how often do plane crashes in general, right, especially um, commercial passenger planes. Uh, and so that could give you your uh, initial anchor. The base rate could give you your initial anchor. You're thinking from the outside view, and then you could adjust it in light of inside information. Right? Okay. So the takeaway here is that right, good forecasting involves synthesizing both outside and inside views, or outside and inside perspectives. Right? But it's important to start with the outside view, since this will typically provide us with a better anchor right, than if we start with our inside view. And we know that humans tend to employ an anchor and adjust heuristic to arrive at numerical estimates. So if we start with the outside view, we'll start with a better anchor and then adjust it a bit and end up with a final, better final estimate than if we started with the inside view and then tried to work backwards to the uh, to consider the outside view. Okay, so this is just right, a, a sort of um, general uh, and admittedly a bit vague way of thinking about forecasting problems in terms of an outside and inside view, uh, different perspectives that we want to synthesize, right? This is another form of thinking like a fox. Right? So then we'll make these informal rules of thumb much more precise when we start going into probability theory next week, and in particular when we start looking at Bayes' theorem. Or we'll say that Bayes' theorem in a nice way synthesizes both outside views, form of looking at base rates or prior probabilities, and inside views, right, in the form of looking at likelihoods. Uh, so we'll see that in the coming weeks. This week, though, just finished the uh, participation poll for this video to participate in the discussion forums for the forecasting probabilities. Your participation in those discussions, as well as your revised forecasting probabilities, will be due on Monday at the usual time. All right, please uh, hit me up. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, thanks a lot.